take the that min max down to minimum and then pre delay it a little bit. We're live. Oh, we're live. Hey. Everybody go to YouTube. <laughs> Every everybody go to YouTube and tell your friends to go to YouTube. Apparently we're alive. We've been uh, Instagram live broadcasting. Is the camera good? Yes. All right. Uh, Sweet. But Brent Colatalo is in the building. Uh, I'm going to get back to the YouTube stream. Uh, see you guys later. Okay. Sorry about that. Are we back live? Holy shit. It's mixing night. Uh, I don't know what meteor struck the house and disrupted the studio, but clearly uh, something's going on. Uh, but we are back, baby. I am going to take you immediately to listening to reverb types and how to identify different reverb types. So I have assembled the dream team of reverbs here. Uh, I have picked a plate, hall, chamber, room, springs, early reflections, and non-linear. Uh, and I'm going to tell you... Uh, I'm going to play them for you and tell you different characteristics of kind of each one. Mike needs to be closer. All right. Um, okay. Um, so I'm going to talk about the characteristics of, of each one of these. And uh, and then, uh, yeah, let's start with the plate. Um, here's the dry room. Uh, here's the dry uh, tambourine. Okay, you can hear like some natural ambience of the actual studio, but no reverb. Here it is with a large plate. So a couple things I want to key in on. It's like you can hear when the tambourine hits. It's like the tambourine just moves through space away from you. It stays dense and coherent. And that's what that means is as it's moving away, you can still understand what um, you're listening to. Whereas, and then if you go to a short plate, then it's just a much more immediate, impactful, kind of wide uh, effect for your tambourine. All right, next is a, a Hall Lexicon 480. Uh, all right, so. This is a long haul. Now, with the plate, you could hear the tambourine move through the uh, the reverb and go away. But with a plate, it's more like a shatter. You know, it kind of hits, and it's like a wind chime. It just shatters into a million beautiful little pieces and then drifts off into space. Check it out. Here's a small haul. Halls tend to be darker than plates. Um, chambers could be as, you know, same. Now, any hall or plate or chamber could be super bright or dark. These are just general characteristics of the real thing in, you know, what used to be the real thing. Um, okay, so we've got uh, short and long halls. Um, again, listen to the diffusion and how this kind of leaves and shatters. You're going to need to know all of this uh, in ear training in just a couple minutes. So, All right. Uh, next is a chamber. Chamber tends to have a real uh, kind of immediate impact to it. A lot of early reflections, but it also tends to be a little bit darker than a plate, and it kind of sounds like a garage or a basement. Here's a, here's a, the UAD Capital Chambers. This one's really great because you can really set how your room reacts to the microphones and the speakers. It's Man, it's such a flexible box. And I don't know if you noticed when I showed the top five go-to reverb plugins of the pros earlier in the broadcast, man, so many heavy hitters had this one in their arsenal, including this made my top five list. So, uh, again, um, chamber is a little bit dark. 
It's dense. You can hear uh, the sound that you're putting into it carry through it as it goes away, kind of more so than a hall, which is a little more diffuse and uh, dispersed. But again, dark. If I put a cello through this, it would be a totally different effect. Uh, wait. <laughs> I need to... Come on, where's the... Uh, all right. Oh, sorry. Boom, here we go. <laughs> See, a cello through a chamber sounds beautiful and dark and warm and rich and really nice. Whereas the tambourine, it probably really wants that upper frequency sizzle uh, uh, that you'll get from like a plate or a bright hall or something like that. Uh, and here's the tambourine. It's not bad on its own, but in a dense mix, you'll probably lose most of that reverb right away. Uh, next, we have... Uh, a room reverb and I I set us up with now I think the king of room reverbs um, my personal opinion is the UAD ocean way uh, if you want to know what a great sounding recording studio live room sounds like they captured this so beautifully but it's a bit of a one-trick pony in that it does small to kind of medium room reverbs uh but what a trick it's just brilliant um but i'm going to show you the plugin alliance room bx room ms uh, because i can instantly switch between small medium and large rooms um and i think these are a bit larger than maybe real life but we'll start here small room medium Notice a room is really immediate. It doesn't like, there's no wait lag time uh, between when the sound is hit and when you hear the size of the space. It happens right away, uh, and it's a, it feels like a pretty natural um, decay. Uh, room could be bright or dark. There's no, uh, you know, depends on the type of a room. If it's a stone room or a wood room or... You know, whatever. Um, all right, so that's rooms. This rooms are not going to be on the exam. <laughs> the ear training is going to be plates, halls, chambers, and springs. So the spring is the last one on the list. And for a tambourine, again, spring is probably not the right choice. The spring it tends to be dark. Uh, spring reverbs are associated with um, electric guitars. If you ever he heard a guitar amp wobble, and then it boing, boing, and you heard the like the echo boing off into space through the speaker, that's a actual spring reverb tank with a real spring in it. That's how that gets done. Uh, and this, um, so I'll play you the cello and the tambourine through this. Um, Again, beautiful and warm on its own, but wouldn't cut in a mix almost at all. But listen, uh, listen to a cello through the spring. Yeah, this is a nice one. Um, and you can kind of go through, you know, and pick your own different. It's got a lot. It's got some interesting options. Uh, that's a nice dirty plug-in as well. Um, the, the next one is Early Reflections, and my favorite is the UAD uh, Early Reflection Engine. Um, and Early Reflections are like the very first slaps off the, off the wall before the reverb really starts. So this is only modeling just that initial moment. It's like the moment of the Big Bang. <laughs> Hear how it just kind of thickens it up and puts it into a space. Listen to what it does to the uh, uh, tambourine. It almost sounds like you put up two microphones and you captured the tambourine in stereo. Listen to it again. Dry. Wet. So I use uh, Reflection uh, Engine a lot to just thicken things up sometimes. 
uh, sometimes on like hi-hats or vocals or anything that I just want some real immediacy and uh, and space to. I use Greenhouse for the same thing. Um, and non-linear. If you don't know what non-linear is, it's like a gated reverb. So it if you have a one-second non-linear reverb and you hit like a one tambourine hit into it, it'll go for a second and then it'll immediately drop off. So it's like all hold and instant decay. Uh, let's listen to non-linear. You can't really hear the cutoff so much. Let me see if I can time it to get a mute in there. You hear that really unnatural non-linear uh, cutoff. Sounds like a just big uh, gated reverb, if you know what that sounds like. So those are the seven types of reverb. Some tips on how to identify them. Uh, let's go to ear training, and then I'm going to bring in Brent for the rest of the show. We're going to run a little bit late tonight because we were a little out of sorts, but... Um, uh, that's the way it goes. So ear training is reverb, ear training, <laughs> and Mazzy is storming the gates. Uh, ear training reverb. Okay. <laughs> hey, Mazzy Bear. How you doing, sweetie? All right. Mazzy Keen Lewis is back in, uh, in uh, protection duty. That girl insists on getting a walk every single day. I've never seen a dog like her in my entire life. And I credit her with keeping us healthy during the pandemic like we never expected to. Thank you, Mazzy Bear. All right, uh, this is, okay, the, the ear training worksheet is in the description of the video you are watching right now. Go grab the PDF and open it up. It'll help guide you. But basically this is what's happening. Each color is a different round. So, uh, round one through round five. And uh, 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 I'm going to play the sound dry first. So here, let's just listen to the first sound dry. Blame it on your... And then I'm going to put that same sound through four different reverbs, A, B, C, and D. And it's either going to be a plate, hall, chamber, or... Uh, spring, um, and they're labeled up there which one is which. Uh, I don't repeat them, so every round uses each type of reverb one time. So it's one point for a correct guess. You gotta, you know, it's kind of good because you can judge different uh, reverbs uh, against each other. So you can listen to this uh, vocal and you can say, okay, well, this might be a short plate and oh, but that sounds like a short plate too. That might be a short chamber. And then the second time you listen through, you go, okay, well, which is brighter? Okay, well, the pl okay, this one's brighter. So this is probably the plate and the darker one's probably the chamber. Um, and, you know, if you were paying attention in the last segment, this might be a little easier. So, okay, so no reverb is repeated. The other thing you need to guess is uh, length. Uh, decay time, short or long. Hey, you. No. Short or long decay time, uh, which for and which order for the uh, plate, chamber, um, spring, and hall. Here we go with example. Round one. Boom. Let's go. Blame it on your... Blame it on your... Two. Blame it on your... Three. Blame it on your... Four. Blame it on your... Round two, dry. One. Are you stumped yet? All right, round three, tambourine. Were you paying attention a minute ago? Here's tambourine dry. Round two. 
Round three, number one. Round three, number two. Round three, number three. Round three, number four. Round four, dry. Four A. Round four, number two. Round four, number three. Round four, number four. Round five, fifth and final round. We have an electric guitar rocking. Five, number one. Five, two, and five, number four. All right, one more listen through, and I'm going to tell you what they are as they go by. <laughs> so, actually, I'm going to stop at the end of the round. That's better. That's better. I'm going to stop at the end of the round and reveal that round's results after this listen through. Round one. Here comes dry. Blame it on your... Blame it on your... Blame it on your... Blame it on your Blame it on your That was a tough one. Cause you know, because the vocal is kind of dark, it doesn't have a bunch of high frequency component to identify other things. Okay, so number one was a long chamber. Long chamber. Number two was a short Hall number two was a short hall. This is round one vocal. Uh, number three was a long plate. Number three was a long plate. Uh, little bitch. Number four is a long spring on round one vocal. Hey, you. Nothing. So let's go to round two and the cello. I'm going to give you guys one more listen and then I'll rattle off the uh, results. Hope you're paying attention. Round two cello. Let's go. <laughs>
All right, and the answers for round two. Number one is a <laughs> short plate. Short plate for the cello round two, number one. Number two is a long haul. Number two is a long haul. Number three is a long spring. Number three is a long spring. And number four is a long chamber. A long chamber on number four. Let's go to round three, tambourine. Is that Wolverine? Dry. Round three, number one. Number two. Round three, number three. Round three, number four. All right, round four, dry. Oh, I got to give you the results till nine. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, round three results. Number one is long chamber. Number one is long chamber. Round three, number two is long plate. Number two is long plate. Uh, round three, number three is short haul. Number three is short haul. And round three, number four is long spring. Long spring. Uh, all right, that's uh, round three now. Round four, shaker, dry. Here we go. Four A. Four number two. Four number three. Round four number four. All right, the big reveal on round four. We have round four, number one, is a long spring. You see how boingy that thing was? That's what we mean by, like, when you say it sounds like a guitar amplifier being rocked. All right. Uh, round four, number two, was a long plate. Uh, round four, number three, was a short haul. And round four, number four, was a short chamber. Short chamber on round four, number four. And round five, I'll put up the, res the full results on the screen in a moment. Here's round five dry. <laughs> Round five, number one. Round five, number two. Round five, number three. Round five, number four, to close it out. Boom, here is your results. All right, how did everybody do? Total of 40 points possible. Round five, number one is a long plate. Uh, number five, number two is a short haul. 
Round five, number three, is a long spring. And round five, number four, is a long chamber. Uh, I really encourage you to restream this and try it again with a fresh PDF and just see how you do again. Um, you know, this stuff is stuff that you can repeat every few months and you're going to forget what the results are and it's going to test your, your ears and your preconceived notions about the characteristics of the reverbs that you think you're choosing in your mix and why you're choosing them. Ha ha! Okay. Um, speaking of sound better, Brent Colatalo absolutely rules on sound better. Uh, I'm going to bring him in here in about two minutes, but right before that, I'm going to play... Uh, Jonathan Garcia's new assistant engineer segment uh, called uh, What I Learned in Jedi School. And um, I want to play this for you guys because any of you guys in school, guys and girls in school out there, uh, you guys should be following uh, Jonathan. I think his uh, Instagram handle is 412dreamer. Um, and uh, he's the assistant here. He has been doing a great job. And he's going to take you to Jedi School. Here's Jonathan Garcia. What up, Mixing Night fam? My name is John. I go by Dreamer. And today we're going to be talking about the top five things that I learned at Jedi School is... <laughs> okay, let's go. All right, first thing is tracking vocals through a limiter on your monitor or record track. This is great for making sure the vocalist gets the same level in their headphones during the tracking, whether they're whispering or they're shouting. I like to use Waves L2, but you can... I don't know why that's doing that, but give me one second. I don't think that's supposed to be doing that. Let's try this. What up, Mixing Night fam? My name is John. I go by Dreamer, and today we're going to be talking about the top five things that I... I'm going to abandon ship on that. I don't know why that's uh, slowing down like that. Damn it. Uh, well, I guess I'm going to go straight to bringing in Brent Colatow. I'm going to skip Marcus Manderson as well. I'll play him at the end of the of the broadcast, but uh, Brent's been here for like almost an hour now. Um, so without further ado, uh, I'm going to bring in my production partner. Uh, he's been here since like 2004, I think. We'll let him tell it. Um and uh, he dropped out of college to work on the college dropout. So uh, please welcome to the broadcast the live human being, Brent Colatalo, a.k.a. Brent K., half of my production duo Catalyst. Brent! Where's Brent? Oh. oh. He's coming, I promise. Be Brent! Hey. Oh, here, give Mazzy a treat. Pay, pay toll to the troll. Oh, yes. She is rocking security around here. How you doing, man? I'm glad I finally got you on the program. Oh, good to be here. How you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm doing great, man. Jesus. This is great. Thank you. We've been uh, reworking stuff. I have a whole Atmos thing set up, so I'm pointed that way for Atmos, and I'm pointed this way for stereo. Oh, wow. It's the craziest thing, but it works. I, yeah, I have a screen over there, and uh, um, so I love uh, the, the red. Yeah, the, I had the, the same guy that heavy. yeah the same guy that did my shatter uh, thing for the console. Um, when I had a uh, Mike Dizzle build me that, I had the shatter guy build me a top where I was like, damn, that yeah, came out that's so great. fucking cool. So, uh, uh, have you seen any of the Kanye Genius uh, documentary yet? No, I've been dying to. Uh, Are you no. in it? I'm. I don't think I'm in it. Nobody's told me I'm in it, so I don't. No. But I mean, our music is in it. Yeah, uh, we're definitely. Our work is totally, totally in it. So I was like randomly scrolling TikTok the other day. I wish I had saved it, and uh, and I come across this. Um, I don't know if you saw it on my Instagram. Um, it was a. Uh, it was a complex posted part of the documentary. Kanye was in the studio during the college dropout, spitting a verse to uh, Never Let Me Down. When it comes oh, to yeah. when truly it's true to me. So, and it's like, it's like Kanye and Pharrell and like three or four other heavy, heavy hitters. And you hear our shit in the background just playing loop and while Kanye's walking through the room just spitting like did, fucking flawless. Did, uh, when you re sang that, did it end up making it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah totally. Okay. Sure. Yeah, there were so was... many things that, like, made it and didn't make it. Like, uh, like... We, we ended up, we worked on that Aretha Franklin joint. 
um, that didn't go. School Spirit. That's what it was. Yeah. That's what I was thinking of. School Spirit. Yeah, we yeah. worked. I on... love that. Oh, uh, that, that, that hurt. That, that that one hurt. <laughs> that, yeah. that one. That one definitely yeah. hurt. School yeah. Spirit. We we worked on and missed. That's real common in Kanye Land. But we got on five on the college dropout. Yeah. Um and uh, but uh, that was one of those things though. Like we, I'll never forget. Like I mean, I was such a newbie at the time, but okay. like I knew like either. We were both just like, this is either going to be the biggest thing ever or it's going to go completely over everyone's heads. Yeah. That... I was, I just remember every day coming in when we were working on that album, just being super excited. Like, I've never been so excited, honestly. Oh, man. That... Because like, you, you just felt, the, just by the music, there was, it was just something so fresh that he was doing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I felt like rhyming wise, he was, he was, like, you guys who weren't like, listening regularly to music when Kanye actually dropped. When Kanye's album came out, nobody was checking. Hey, you. Nobody was checking for him. And he was like, he did a Kurt Cobain on music. He basically took where hip-hop was going and go, no, you're going to go this way now. And and everybody followed. And uh, and then he did it like three or four more times in, in his career. Fucking incredible. But we got to hear the college dropout when it was being put together. Yeah. And, uh, Hey, did you, did you ever Robert. tell uh, the the Casio story about all the all the lights? I think I have told like that Marco on the broadcast. I, can I, I say it? Yeah, yeah. You you no, remember? I'll never, yeah, I'll never forget. Like, uh, so uh, what was it? Yeah, like you got the the yeah, plain... first of many demos from Kanye for that. I think, but it was like a Casio. <laughs> yeah, Plain Pat sent me just like yeah. a little. It it's it was like a an MP3, but... yeah, and, and like it's so like make this sound like live horns, and it was like this '80s Casio keyboard. It, it sounded like thing. a twenty dollar keyboard. I shit you but, not. And but like that's the brilliant uh, brilliance of Kanye is like he knows like he he knows the people to I don't know who can get the job done and like, express right. his ideas to. You know? Yeah, like bringing John Bryan was a yeah. master oh stroke. Yeah, part. what a genius. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I remember. Yeah, his his when he sent me that uh, plain Pat sent me that little clip and it was this shit Casio keyboard like me 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 me. me I didn't me, get me, it. Me. I didn't get um, it at all. And yeah, <laughs> I, like, oh, I don't know. I don't know how this is gonna sound any good. <laughs> so, and then Kanye calls me up and he's like. We literally have like a two minute conversation and he just says, I want this to sound like a marching band in a stadium at halftime. And that was just based off of that like crazy ass Casio yeah. single note, single note melody that yeah. he sent. And we blew that shit out to be like the whole fucking horn section uh, with Danny Flams. Yeah, of course, Danny, Danny Flams. Oh my God, genius. super talented. Uh, um, but I want to go back to the college dropout because like... Here's a, a, it's interesting perspective for me because you were so young. Yeah. And like yeah. you were just, so the, the running joke uh, in Catalyst Land is, is Brent quit. Uh, Brent dropped out of college to work on the college dropout, which is 100% true. Yeah. The first year I dropped out of college at Berkeley was the year we, I ended up going to the Grammys for working on the college dropout. As an engineer. Yeah. Like as an nom official yeah. Grammy nominee. And Brent I thought that was like a normal thing. I was like, yeah, this is like, <laughs> this, this, is, how it is. this is how, this is how it's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Fuck. sometimes. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Um. Uh, is that not how's? Oh, is it not? Uh, Do no, I need it, to talk into it's it? It's not the mic. I think the mic no. stand is the mic stand. Uh, is it blocking? How about how about that? Is that better? Is it good? Oh well, I mean, he's all uh, Jackson Pollock anyway, yeah. so he's fine. Got the uh, Jackson Pollock vibe. Yeah. I can hold it. No, we're we're good. We're good? It's you just sure? it was in front of you from uh, the camera. Oh, that's, I got you. I got you. Okay. Oh okay. uh, well, yeah, we're all good. Um, okay. but uh, but yeah, back to the college dropout. Um, were were you in the studio the night that I mixed uh, Friday Night for Young Guns? I don't. I don't know. There's I don't, been. I don't feel like you were. There. Everything's a blur. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of late late studio nights. Yeah, that was right before Kanye's album came out. And uh, actually, Just Blaze did the PSA beat that night. 
uh, on. He was I was mixing Young Guns. This was Battery Studio A. And, oh, I know and, what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. he was behind yeah. me, and he had a couple friends bring in a couple records, and he was just cooking up in headphones right behind me in the middle of the session. He just goes like, "Hey, can you put this up on the bigs for a second? And he hits play on that fucking MPC, and it was the full on PSA beat. Like, stop the fucking room cold. It was incredible. And then, of course, Jay-Z took it for the Black Album. Anyway, back to Kanye. Uh, last Call. You know we gotta talk about Last yeah. Call. <laughs> so, so what is your memory of working on Last Call? The, I just remember... Oh, not, I'm sorry, not Last Call. Uh, uh, family Business. Family Business, yes. yes. No, I think you were working on... I forget what it was. You were up... Uh, it was like... You've been up over 24 hours working on... On, oh yeah. On uh oh yeah, <laughs> that Lori. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where I forget what you were working on, but so, like uh, you were looking cracked out. Oh like, dude. I like I my like my routine was usually come, like I was like the assistant coming in at like like nine eight in the morning, and like I would usually have all the grunt work, but like you were you were still I think it was like nine ten in the morning. You were still up from like, you know, we were in Kanye, Kanye Land College Dropout like locked down for like two weeks and like you were cracked out like trying to sing a vocal and i was like making fun of you and and then uh, you're like why don't you try this and i was <laughs> and i don't sing I, like, i'm like probably the worst worst singer you could ever imagine i was like you know what fuck it i'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, do, I'm gonna do it i'm gonna do, do we do we have that handy jonathan the um uh, no it's, oh, it's, it's so bad it's, it's so awesome bad. Yeah. yeah so i sound like a child well, <laughs> like like a like this innocent yeah, sweet I'm, I'm the old southern black child. man so if you listen to family business when it goes all the glitters is not gold that's me that is my voice saying that i pitched it down and and filtered and distorted and saturated all that fun shit slowed it down and then Brent comes in, and I did look totally cracked out. I'm, like, probably stunk to high heaven, was yeah. in my pajamas, hadn't shaved in two weeks. He's usually used to that, though. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he walks in, and I'm just like, all the glitters, all the glitters, he's not real. And he's like, what? And I'm like, you, uh, oh, you do the next one, you do the thing. Uh, so when you listen to Family Business, the thang, the thang, thang, the thang, that's Brent. And... So I was like, all right, all right, Smarty, here, you do the uh, thing. And I, I went downstairs and sat on the couch with Lori, and for like two or three hours, we just were laughing downstairs. Oh, yeah, it took me, like, just to get that one part, like, that, that literally, all I had to say was thang, the thang. <laughs> took me over three hours to do. I could not get it right. <laughs> it was the pressure. So, oh, the gosh, pressure yeah. so deep. Yeah. Oh. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing that genius documentary. I, so, yeah, I'm dying to see it. I, so, I haven't somebody, had time yet. Somebody told me uh, episode one had uh, All Falls Down. Um, oh, was my, heavy on. Nice. So, yeah. Just that whole album. So like, I'm so proud. Like, so proud we're a part of that. Yeah, oh, man. It's what like a, probably a, one of my favorite man. albums. Like, I'm pro like that and the Lana Del Rey. Like, you know, Born to Die. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, we just got three new plaques for the Lana record. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we got, I got, I don't know what you're up to, but I'm up uh, to 106, 7, and 8, thanks to Lana. Thank you, Lana Del Rey. Yeah. Um, and uh, um, that was kind of not long after that time either. Yeah. Um, was born to die. But yeah, I never thought Kanye would, would top the college dropout and then My Beautiful Dark. Oh my God. Like, yeah. I mean, but it's like a different, like. It's a, it's a growth. Yeah, it's a growth, but it's brilliant as well. Yeah, like I love them both equally. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah they incredible. like that one is, hits you in different ways. I, 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 my personal opinion on the My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy is, if the Kanye Taylor thing hadn't happened, he wouldn't have been so driven to make such a brilliant album. Um, Interesting. I, yeah, it's I my gut. That. It's yeah. my gut feeling because I know it affected him, and I know he tried to get Taylor to be on that record. And but I mean, if you just that, the whole album's such a masterpiece. Yeah. And the college dropout for such a young artist to have achieved such a and you know the other thing that I love about Kanye is what you were mentioning about um, he always has the wherewithal to surround himself with high level creatives yeah even though he could do it all himself yeah but i mean yeah that's what it's all about is collab collabing with people who you know you can only i mean no, you, you shouldn't 
know your strengths you know that's like right. what a good producer is all about is like you know being able being able to delegate you know and like being like okay you know what i, I think this guy could actually bring something that this person could bring something else to the table yeah. that i can't you know and just being okay with that and that's it, it, at the end, end of the day it's all about the music and like what's gonna make the song better and like there should be no ego involved yeah that's the that's the craziest dichotomy of kanye is his complete and utter lack of ego in collaborating musically compared to his complete ego yeah. non-musically. It's like a... But for whatever reason, man, when he gets around other creatives, what, it just... What's your all-time favorite Kanye song? I, I'd probably have to say All of the Lights just because it was such a huge contribution to it. But, but I mean, Last Call holds a dear spot in, yeah. in my... Uh, uh, memory banks. What's yours? Uh, Runaway. Runaway? Yeah. I don't really? know. Yeah. It just hits me. It, 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 it like it pierces my soul when I hear that. that even that, that one piece, it's so like simple, but like it's so beautiful. I love the, uh, um, on Beautiful Dark Twist of Fantasy, I didn't, we didn't work on this, but uh, the Here's to the Douchebags. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. What an anthem. Uh, that just caught a moment in time. It was really something special. Uh, you know, uh, we've been really lucky to have, uh, I don't know how much people really know about us, but here's some things that me and Brent Colatalo have produced on, or some artists that we have produced for. Uh, Kendrick Lamar. Um, yeah. who, who else? Uh, Future. Future, Eminem, Kanye. Yeah. Ex-Ambassadors. Ex-Ambassadors, J. Yeah. Cole. Yeah. Uh, Ciara. Yeah. Um, God damn, who, did we say yeah. Kendrick Lamar? I, you did, uh, yeah. Uh, One Republic. Yeah, that's been that's um, been Alan good. Anderson, we've we've had quite a little nice nice little run going. Yeah. Um and uh Scrizzly Adams new album just came out. We um produced that whole thing and helped write on it and the whole Love you, Scrizz. Love you, Scrizz. <laughs> good luck with the new record. <laughs> We're pushing hard for it. Um and you can find him at Scrizzly Adams uh on all socials and Spotify and everything. Definitely check out the new album, we love it. Uh, what else is going on in Brent Colatalo land? You're on Sound Better, which I just got on. Yeah, yeah, I love it. What's your uh, experience on Sound Better? Tell people how to get a hold of you. How uh, to yeah, how my to yeah, I'm on uh, my Instagram is just Brent K at, at Brent K Music. Um, yeah, I, well, you're on Sound Better now. I mean, I, I just got on. Sound yeah, Better. I like it. It's just uh, it's it's good. To, I don't know. There's there's def different levels of talent. There's a lot of a lot of good, a lot of bad. But like it, it, it's rewarding to help people out who need help too. You know, and like right. and like, I don't know. Like, I, I find it rewarding uh, to, I don't know, just uh, work with indie artists and uh, be able to provide some services that. Uh, I know, like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I know you, you're, you feel the same way as like, you, you work on indie stuff, you go with just as hard as you would on major label stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's like, you know, a lot of people don't know, like there's some amateur stuff and like, you, like there's different ways to handle, like responding back to clients, but like, you know, everyone's at a different level and it's, it's a learning experience for, for Everybody, actually. And, and I think you find some amazing artists. Oh, my God. To you as well. Oh, no. That's one of the, the beautiful things. Like, you just never know. There's some people who I'm just like, are you, what? Right. I'm like, where did you come from? Like, and I haven't released anything. And, like, the amount of talent and that's out there, like, it's unbelievable. And I think that's a, a real learning experience for artists nowadays is there's not really even anything such as fame anymore on like a Drake or a Dell level. I don't even think artists starting now can get there. But what you can do is find your niche of people who love what you do and build that fan base and expand out from there. And you don't need to have everybody love you. You just need a few million streams a month and you can eat very well. And we know a lot of indie artists who do that and live completely on music. Yeah, I mean... I, I mean, I guess now what everyone's saying, like, TikTok is the new MTV, you know, so. It is. On, and on, like, I don't know if that's good, good or bad, but that, that's just the way it is now. And, like, I, that that's the one thing in music is, like, you have to pivot. Like, it sh things change so quickly. You know, yeah, I, I resisted the TikTok thing for a while, and yeah. I probably don't use it the way most people use it. But, um, 
But I just find, like, you can tailor the experience to what you want and what interests you. So, you know, my feed is stuff that interests me. And if I want to find new artists that interest me, then my feed will be filled with artists, new artists that interest me. And the other great thing about TikTok is the typically the cream rises to the top. So you can't buy your way to the top unless you have a ton of money for an influencer. And it tends to be, like, the really best creative content wins. Right. Um, which is really democracy by the Chinese company. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? How often? Do, I didn't know you were on TikTok. How often do you? Uh, I'm like, su I don't post on TikTok. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm yeah, kidding. I don't either. I, I just use it as research. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Because I mean, that's yeah. I've actually been. You're Ukrainian. Yeah. And uh, we've oh, been yeah. glued to the uh, uh, war in Ukraine, and I've been getting most of my updates on TikTok. Oh wow! It's, it's incredible. Really? Oh yeah, yeah, the Ukrainians are. But how do you know if it's like real though? Well, I don't. You know, I don't take everything that I see for for exactly what I'm looking at, and I try and find uh, vetted sources. But typically, you just get a good sense of uh, what's going on. And I also follow a lot of like high level experts. So like, there's a foreign policy expert that I follow that okay. posts like twice a day. Right. And, you know, so you're getting like really valid insights and information from people who don't have an agenda um, uh, to post. And, you know, it's a completely different thing than finding music there. But I, I just like TikTok is a tailored experience. I like it. Yeah. Um, what else is going on? Uh, uh, I wanted to do critiques. I don't know. Did you get the did something happen with the like Lori? Yeah. Yeah, something I don't know happened what with the, happened. The, the, yeah. the, the, the what do you usually thing? do on the critique thing? I've like, never done it. I wanted to Oh, that'd be fun. And, I mean we could do one or yeah, one or let's two. Do, let's do one. I think I saved a few. Um so What are we like are we critiquing the production or just the song? I or think what whatever you, fully uh, whatever it is. What what it kind of okay. mixing production, uh, arrangement, any any of the above. Okay. Uh, let's start with uh, Louis Sal Saldivar. Louis Saldivar, Cold Case. Uh, here we go. We're going to listen to 90 seconds of it and then talk about it. You can never crack me, I'm a cold case. You can never crack me, I'm a cold case. You can never crack me, I'm a cold case. You I'm a cold case. You can never crack me. I'm a cold case. You can never crack me. I'm a cold case. You can never crack me. I'm a cold. No, you love my style, bitch. Don't hate. Give been all my trials and so wait. You will try to break me, but it won't break. You can never crack me. I'm a cold case. Yeah, welcome to slaughter. This ain't the rat that you share with your daughters. Mine's been fucked up since I was a toddler. They won't send my niggas. They know I'm a product. Rapping that H with the H's for horror. These voices have sent me to murder your genre. Talking like you with a voice of the mall. You fuck around and get murdered, my yana. Yeah, the one who would rest up in Sorrow Hills. Walk up to stress and a lot of bills. This is a trap, though it's not a deal. I am a legend and got the will. Just know that my man got a lot of kills. Really, your monster is not a drill. Walk with a rocket like I'm quill. You cannot crack me, I'm not a seal. You can never crack me, I'm a cold case. You can never crack me, I'm a cold case. You can never crack me, I'm a cold case. You can never crack me, I'm a cold. Know you love my style, bitch, don't hate. They've been on my trial since so wait. They've been trying to break me, but he won't break. You can never crack me, I'm a cold case. You can never crack me, I'm a cold case. All right, Louis Saldivar, Cold Case. So obviously it's not mixed. Uh, it's yeah. all like vocals and sub right now. It says rough mix, so you know he's not trying to do anything. But obviously the vocals are way too loud. Yeah. My my first <laughs> impression of it was that there is no dynamic to the vocal delivery. Like he can clearly flow his ass off, but it was. Here's the at ten, yeah, nonstop, ten, ten, yeah, ten, ten, ten. That's ten, actually a ten. really good point, yeah. Yeah, it never released, so the the energy level uh, didn't let the listener relax between the intro uh, chorus, which probably went on twice as long as it needed to, um, and then into the verse. The verse should let you just breathe for a moment, and not have to focus so much. Um, uh, so um, those are kind of my main observations. I'm right there with you. And, just and I, the yeah the vocal though it was just super loud. I mean it'd be it'd be cool. I know it's a rough mix, but just a l different treatment. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd I'd be interested to hear what it sounds like with more of a solo lead vocal with support. Yeah, instead of like hundred percent. Yeah, because to me it's like when you have a solo artist with layers of equal volume lead vocals, it sounds like a group. 
that sounds like a group of artists shouting at me or, or rapping at me instead of one artist that I can really lock into. Whereas if you have a lead vocal with like support ad libs underneath emphasizing certain words and stuff, then it's more your focus is only on the lead vocalist. So let's go to Abraham Knowlton. Abraham Knowlton. I, I like that name. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's an epic name. He's, Abraham Knowlton. He's good. I think he Abraham's in college up in somewhere on the East Coast right now. Okay. Um, all right, here we go, Abraham. All right, Abraham Knowlton. Uh, first impressions? I, I liked it a lot, actually. Yeah, I that was that, pretty fresh. <laughs> that was super dope. I, yeah. I liked um, a lot of your sound choices. I thought your mix balances were really good. Yeah. Um, my my main observation is I thought the mix was a little bit safe. Like I could hear if you mixed it, it would probably be a little more saturated and probably with a that. touch more like space created um for the instruments to kind of live within um and i felt like if you spent a little bit more time just searching for a little bit of extra vibe uh that there's probably some there to be had especially during that verse before everything else kind of explodes and takes up all the space in it um that that first section is kind of more ripe for the um you know just dialing in some mood getting something yeah more unique yeah yeah, for sure. But like, yeah, that's that's really good though. Like, yeah. yeah, the chorus is super fire. Yeah, when that thing drops, man, you feel yeah. it for sure. Uh, let's do one more. Why not? Right. Uh, Chris, Chris Rungu, Chris Rungu. <laughs> I mean, it's not my style of music, so it's hard. It's hard but like, what it feels think, good. Like overall, the mix. The mi ah, it, it sounded a like it. It sounds like a rough mix a bit. I like. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Lie. I like the imaging a lot with it. Like, I, I like generally where you placed everything, but it didn't feel like completely finished. Um, but I will say, it, it took me back to uh, you know, we have a place in Ecuador and. This is the, anytime I'm in Ecuador, I hear this kind of stuff on the radio and in the taxis and everything, and, and it's, it just kind of brings me back to that moment. So, um, really well done. Uh, yeah, no, definitely well done. Like, the vibe is, is, is 
super on point. Yeah, you can tell like the recordings were, yeah. you know, you really took some time uh, with the recordings and the um, performances. Uh, I would just work on getting a little bit more clarity out of the mix. There's a little yeah, bit definitely. Of, yeah, there was like a little bit of harshness. Harsh, in the yeah. That that's um, that. I think that's what was really bothering me. Yeah, especially the vocal had this kind of like two everything head, seems like just head. sucked in this mid range vibe. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think if you clear out the mid range a little bit, uh, then you're gonna do uh, much better. And all right, let's go one more, and then all I right. think we're gonna probably wrap up with Marcus Manderson and end the broadcast. Cool. Uh, here is uh, Justin as well. Justin as well. Definite comments. What are yours? Uh, I mean, I, I like the, the song in general. Uh, the chorus, I feel like there needs to be a chorus, though, kind of. Thing. Uh, but, yeah. like, the, the personality, like, oh, my God, it's, like, dead on, like, hit. Like, that's, I, I, that's, I can't, I don't I forget who it reminds me of, the specific. Yeah, uh, yeah I love like, that. It's these... super on, on on the nose for some 80s band. I can't I can't remember who it is. It's going to drive me nuts. Like you know it. what I'm talking about. I, I yeah. Know. It's it's I can't find it either. But, but. It, it's a, it's really well done. Uh I think the mix needs to be better. 100%. Yeah. And and I But I the vibe like to layer his his lead vocal. Yeah. It might be cooler just by itself or that texturing might be what really does it, but I love the kind of reckless abandon with which you sing and bend your things around and really just get weird and creative with it. That sticks with me a lot. Uh, my two cents, the verse was way too long and lost me long before you got to the chorus, which was at about a, a minute 14 in. And the chorus wasn't really a chorus. It was more like a pre-chorus. And so what I would do is I would shorten the intro and then I would cut the verse uh, in half or less and I would get to what you're calling the chorus now and make that a pre-chorus as fast as you can and then write a bigger chorus and then you might really have something with this because I feel like there's a bunch of really really cool ideas that aren't fully fleshed out really cool this. ideas like really yeah yeah this could be really neat um, so anything else you want to talk about or plug while you're here no just just hanging Nice. Well, fun, fun, yeah. like, great to have you on the show. Yeah. Man. It's only been two years. Yeah. You know, the anniversary of uh, lockdown is um, March 14th. Oh, wow. That's the day it's we went into crazy. lockdown. And uh, I think we our first broadcast was either March 20th or March 29th of 2020. So it'll be uh, our two year anniversary of mixing night before. Uh, it's crazy to think about. <laughs> Dude, it's hard yeah. to I've barely seen you in two years. I know. I basically disappeared from society. I'm, you know, I gotta be careful. So, that's yeah. what it is. But uh, anyway, you know, uh, you know, I'm COVID positive, right? <laughs> I was hoping so. <laughs> Kiss you later. <laughs> Enjoy that. Oh, yeah. I came to give you the gift of COVID. <laughs> oh, thank you. I was hoping somebody close to me would. <laughs> oh man.
All right, uh, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna end the show with Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery. He's gonna bring you all about um, hi hats. Where is Marcus Manderson? Where is Marcus Man Mixing Night Man of Mystery? And uh, say goodbye to Brent Colatalo, Brent K. Uh, and uh, thank you for coming on. Yeah, no, it was a pleasure. Check out all of our work on the uh, Kanye calls dropout and uh, everything else. Man, we've been on some hits. Uh, all right, Brent, see you later, man. And here is Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery. What's good, Mixing Night family? This is Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery, back with another Mixing Night Man of Mystery moment. And this Mixing Night Man of Mystery moment, we're going to talk all about hi-hats. We're going to talk about how you can sort of manipulate them in your music productions, some plugins that you can use, some ideas that I want to share with you. Um, I'm going to start with this, Hat Tricks from DigiNoise. It is about $60, 60 pounds-ish, but it's not free, um, but you can definitely catch it on sale. But the idea, um, if you see the bottom here, they have different pitches, they have articulations and divisions. So this is like uh, the articulation here. Um, here's a division where you have like uh, eighth notes, sixteenth notes. So you can build patterns out that way. This particular plugin actually does have other sounds, so I can load up a snare or a kick. But with hi hats, you can really manipulate them in this plugin. Again, there are other plugins like that out there. And if you just go on searching on Google for free hi hat loops, um, you can find some out there. Our friends at Cymatics have some great loops out there, and I'm going to show you one of those loops here and show you some ways that you can sort of have fun with hi hats. Uh, so here is uh, the loop as it is. So pretty, you know, standard, nothing too crazy to write home about. And we're going to start with just our good old fashioned friend here, Lynn, and uh, who's uh, hiding in this pot right there, and Green Haas. Um, there are a bunch of presets. If you missed it, there are now a bunch more presets that if you already have the plugin, you can get more presets from the Mixing Night Audio site. Definitely check out the new presets that have been added. Uh, you can check those out. Let's just load up a random synth light water and we'll see how that sounds on this loop. So right away, you hear that it's adding some width, adding some character to it. Um, maybe if you want to take out some of the lows, because it is a hi-hat. Um, it's just adding some of that character. So you can really have fun with Green Haas. That's just one of them. We also have RC20. Again, not a free plugin, but there was a great deal a couple weeks ago, uh, if you missed it in the, in the uh, Discord group. But let's just find a random uh, preset in here. Uh, I just got this, so I don't really know this plugin. Um, we'll just go to Double Track, and we'll see how that sounds. So it's just a preset, just adding, sounds like a little bit of reverb, maybe a little bit of phasing stuff. So you can also just add a reverb um, distortion. You can really just go crazy with hi-hats. Just going through some other presets. And we'll go back. Some of them might be too extreme, but you can tweak them in whatever plugin you decide to use. I'm going to come back to Step Effects, which is the Logic Stock plugin. I am going to show you a free plugin here. So we're going to go to Emergence, um, which is a granular, I believe, delay echo. I will include a link in the Discord group to the to all of these plugins. Um, but this one is the free one in the group, and we're going to just show uh, show you how that sounds. So adding just some granular delay echo type things. You can get in here and tweak the knobs. Um, again, uh, let me just tweak some more knobs here. So it's really more sound design with this one. There are, as far as I know, there are no presets here. Um, so it's just really you good at getting in there, dialing in some options. You can load up to what they call streams, four different streams, and then you also have LFOs. Uh, then some macro knobs down here. You can automate them if you want. Uh, so a lot of knobs here, a lot of power in here. A free plugin. I will include a link to Emergence in the Discord group. Um, and also, finally, we'll end with Step Effects. So Step Effects is basically my equivalent i was using sound toys tremulator for hi-hats if you have tremulator uh from sound toys uh look for the glitch pong preset for hi-hats i've used that on hi-hats uh before i i started using this method and it basically adds some of that movement some of that like weird fun stuff to hi-hat loops so um how can you get that in logic pro specifically if you find step effects it is listed under multi effects uh step effects here um, i just have the stereo version and just go through the presets we're just going to play uh, we're going to loop this and we're going to play through some presets
Let me go to some gated. So it's just adding that character that I mentioned earlier from Greenhouse. This adds a little bit of that character and movement and panning and it just adds all kinds of effects. So I really like using step effects and you can just do a combination of these. You can add your own plugins just to get you to think a little bit differently, adding distortion, adding reverb, adding delay, adding modulation, all these different plugins just on your hi-hats. Uh, you can extrapolate that and add it to your percussion loops, to drum loops also. Um, but that's just, just have fun. Get out there and have fun with these plugins. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, again, some great ideas. Hopefully to help you think about hi-hats differently. This has been Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Meta Mystery with another Mixing Night Meta Mystery moment. Be safe and be well, everyone. All right, all right, peace. Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery to close out another great Mixing Night. Thank you so much for joining me and all of our team. Uh, man, I uh, hope you had a great time. We had a great show. Sorry for the technical difficulties, but, you know, it's live broadcasting. That's the way it goes. So until so we only broadcast once a month now. The first Wednesday of every month is Mixing Night. So I will see you in uh, the first Wednesday of April. Until then, happy mixing. Good night.